Okay, please, ti please title your notes die hybrid cross. Now, most Punnett squares that you do have four boxes. They're just really, really easy. Uh, but uh, welcome to AP Biology, where you have boxes that have 16 boxes uh, because you're trying to track two traits at the same time, two alleles at the same time. Now, why would we do that? Because remember from the last lesson, we learned about linked genes. So it's very often the case that the reason we perform these crosses is because we're trying to find out whether the two genes of interest are linked. Okay. So we're going to put, are they linked? And specifically what we're referring to in this problem is the gene L and W. L uh, referring to long stems and then W referring to white flowers. Okay, so uh, the question is, are these two genes linked? That's what we're trying to find out. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and cross a, uh, we're going to do a cross between homozygous uh, recessive. And what would that be for this? Uh, if, if these are the genes we're looking at, that would be little l, little l, little w, little w. Little L, little L, little W, little W. And a um, heter heterozygote. And the, the uh, genotype for that would be big L, little W, big W, little W. That's what the heterozygote looks like. Okay, so <clears throat> how do we cross individuals when we're looking at two genes at the same time? You have to, what you have to do is you got to create a grid that is 16 boxes. So the way you do that is you got to have four rows and four columns to do this. Now, why is that the case? Uh, the reason that that's the case is because we're, we're going to be dealing with four different gametes. And then when, when you have four eggs and four sperms, there's going to be 16 combinations between those egg and sperm. In this case, it's not, I guess it would be uh, pollen because it's a flower. But anyway, um, let's look at, so let, let's go ahead and put the, the homozygote up top. So this individual, the top row will represent the, uh, the homozygous recessive, which means that the, let's say pollen grains, which are the gametes for flower, uh, the only pollen grains that that individual can produce would be this, right? It's not possible to get anything other than that. So we just put that all the way across. Now remember students, this, these arrows that I'm showing you here, like this production of pollen grains, that's meiosis. So if you want to, you can look back at your notes and kind of picture the chromosomes and how they separate. But no matter how you divide them up, you're only ever gonna get little w, little l for this, for this, um, for parent number one, right at the top. Now on the side, we have uh, a heterozygote and assuming, okay, you guys write this in all caps, assuming they are not linked, big assumption because there's always the possibility that they are linked, but let's assume that they're not linked, then you can get the following. Big L, big W, big L, little W, little L, big W, and little L, little W. Does everybody agree that those are four possibilities, assuming that these 
uh, that these genes are on separate chromosomes. If they are on separate chromosomes, then yes, we can, we can um, get all four of those gametes. Now, I want you guys to star this, okay? The assumption, make sure that that is highlighted in some kind of way because that assumption is not always true. It's not always true that they're not linked. And in fact, the whole uh, reason that we're doing this Punnett square is because we're trying to figure out if they are linked or not based on the numbers. So I think you can probably see what's coming here. You can tell that we're going to do a chi squared. We're going to do a chi squared at the end. All right. Now, if this, if they are not linked and you know, everything is as we're showing, then if you go and you fill in everything, you're going to find that all of the rows are the same all the way across, right? So like, you see how these are all the same so far? And so that would be, those would be um, long stems, white flowers. And we've got 25% of the offspring is what that represents because that's one quarter of all of the offspring. If you do the next row, you're going to get long stems, but red flowers. Long stems, red flowers. And that's all the way across. See how they're all the same? If you look at the, the way that these go. And that, is, that too is 25% moving along. This one with this row would be short stems, white flowers. And that's the same all the way across. Short stem, white flowers, 25%. And lastly, short stem, red flower. Twenty-five percent. Okay, so just showing you that that this is our expected. We expect twenty-five, twenty-five, twenty-five. So now it's time to see if the actual numbers are corresponding to that. And if they are, then we have reason to believe the genes are not linked and everything's normal. If the numbers don't follow twenty-five, 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 then we have we suspect that they're probably linked, and that's what's skewing the numbers. So let's look at the numbers. Here they are. If you do the, if you look at the expected for, say, um, oh gosh, I gotta write these again, I guess. So let me just write these out. Okay, so what do we what did we expect again? Um, well, if we had, let's say that there's out of a hundred individuals or a hundred offspring, we're expecting to see twenty five long stem white flowers, twenty five individuals that have long stems and red flowers, and so on and so forth. That's my prediction, right? Just like with the coin flip today, you predicted fifty fifty. We are predicting 25, 25, 25 for these uh, different types of possible offspring. Okay, now here's, here's what happened though. When you actually went and did the experiment, you, got, you didn't get exactly that. In fact, you got 17 here. Thirty one here. Thirty three here. And nineteen here. So 
So, um, what what do we make of that when we let, when we get the actual results? Can we say right now, just just at a glance, can we say that they're that these genes are linked? Do we suspect it? Do we at least kind of think, okay, those numbers are those numbers are different enough to make me think that they might be linked, right? That's probably where we're at, right? We suspect they're linked because they're not really following the 2525. They're a little bit off. So we need to investigate further by doing the chi-squared to see if it's off by enough to really be statistically significant. Let me just reiterate, why would they be off? Back to the assumption, here's why. If this assumption is not true, then we're not going to get in the pollen grains that are produced, we're not going to get all four of those because those genes are going to be, they're not going to be separate from each other and they won't be able to be distributed equally into the gametes. Instead, they'll be inherited together. And so you're not going to have 25% of the pollen grains being capital L, capital W, because you're just not going to get even distribution because those genes are linked and so they get inherited together. That might be the case. And if it and it kind of looks like it is because we're not seeing the nice even 25-25. Okay, but the only way to know is to do the observed minus expected squared divided by E and then add all those up. So calculator, 25 minus 17 is eight. Eight squared is 64, and then 64 divided by the uh, 25 expected. 2.56, now I'm gonna do this for all of them real quick and I'll, I'll show you the results. <clears throat> <coughs> One point four four. I can already tell that these numbers are that I can already tell that the chi squared is going to be very large. <clears throat> okay, and if you if you tally all of that up which is what you need to do. And you have to remember it's the sum, right? There's the big sigma. That means you got to add them all up. So if you add up all these numbers here, you get a chi-squared value of eight. Okay, but we still don't know if that's large enough to exceed the critical value. So I got to go to the chi-squared table, figure out the degrees of freedom, and in this case, there's four categories. So my degrees of freedom is four minus one. So I have three degrees of freedom. So DF equals four minus one, which equals three. I, so I go to the third row and then I'm, again, always gonna do the 0.05 for the, for the level of certainty. And so that the critical value Wow, it's actually very close. The critical value is 7.8. Now here's what we notice. Our chi-squared exceeds the critical value, which means, uh, so, so therefore we reject the null. Now what was the null? The null is that um, the null hypothesis was that there's no difference. So if we reject the idea that there's no difference, that's the same as accepting the fact that there is a difference, right? Everybody got that? If you reject the idea that there is no difference, you are 
you are saying that there is a statistically significant difference. Therefore, <clears throat> L and W are linked. Okay? This is a classic problem, and you're going to get it on the test. <clears throat> 